guys, how y'all doing today? My name is Franchise Fanatic, and welcome back to the channel. And if you can't already guess, by the new poster, today we're uh, going to be tackling Thor, Love, and Thunder. Of course, uh, you probably saw the thumbnail and uh, read the title. So, but there, there's more proof right there. We're tackling the new Thor from Thor 4, Thor, Love, and Thunder. So this is going to be a spoiler-free review. If you have not seen Thor, Love, and Thunder, please go see it. Um, you know, it's not on Disney Plus yet, it's only in theater, so go, go to a theater and watch it. Um, I am posting this, of course, you know, the day of, uh, what is it, July 8th. Um, so technically the movies, this is the first day out. Everyone that saw it early, saw it early. So, I kind of have to start off this video with a new topic for apparently these Marvel movies, which I guess the new topic is going to be, quote, is it woke? Um, now, I don't like talking about politics on this channel. I don't think anyone likes to do that anyway. It's, it's stupid. But when you bring politics into movies, you got to bring it up because that's what you're asking for it at that point. So, you know, of course, you know, uh, Doctor Strange, Multiverse of Madness got banned for things. Uh, Lightyear got banned for a lot of things. You know, Eternal. So a lot of these movies, if you can kind of tell, they all kind of have the same theme in common. And this, uh, you know, is not banned, but, you know, there are two, uh, I guess you could say, woke moments. Uh, you know, lesbians and gay moments. Uh, nothing, you know, insane, but I do have to mention it because, you know, it's, it's just, I don't know. I'm surprised it didn't get banned. It's not that bad. Uh, Doctor Strange 2 got banned. I don't know why. Yes, there was a woke moment in that, but it wasn't that bad. I think at this point, we just have to assume that every Marvel movie going forward is going to have some element of that in it. I know some people literally contact me and they're like, hey, franchise, is this, is this, is this? And, uh, yeah, I would say there are two woke moments in this film. It, it's, of course, not going to impact my review of the movie because that's not how you should review a film, but personally, it's in there. So for people that are wondering, oh, is this okay for certain people? Uh, again, they're... You know, one thing's with Valkyrie, and one thing's with Korg. Uh, I'm not going to tell you what it is, because they're not really spoilers, but, you know, I don't want to just, oh, here, this is in the movie. So, you know, I don't want to give away too many things. But, yes, for those wondering, that's my new segment, Is It Woke? I hate talking about this stuff, but, again, when you put it in movies, you have to talk about it, because movies are getting banned left and right. And this one, I don't believe, is banned anywhere. But, uh, you know, just, just to let you know. Other than that stuff, though, this is, of course, by Taika Waititi, who did Thor 3, Thor Ragnarok, a bunch of other films as well. You know, he's in Green Lantern, of course, you know, all that. But uh, this is really his, probably the best Thor movie. I wasn't a big fan of Thor in Ragnarok. I like the movie, uh, but I'm actually going to have a video probably in a day or two talking about Thor as a character. I wanted to talk about that in this video, but I figured it'd be too long, and I already reviewed some LEGO Marvel 2 gameplay of Thor. And Mighty Thor, so, you know, I figured, you know, screw it, I'll, I'll have another video. So I'm going to have another video, don't worry, talking about Thor in the MCU. But in this film, he is funny. This is a very funny movie, all right? That's my big, uh, one of my biggest positives before I tackle negatives is that it's a funny movie, but it's actually funny. You know what I mean? Like, in some of the Marvel movies, you know, they have a tendency, uh, and some of the shows too, they have a tendency of trying to be funny, and it doesn't work because, you know, I always relate it to Ninjago, but that's what you have to do, right? It's a good correlation. So the MCU really is not a comedy franchise. It is an action drama franchise. That's what it is. It's Marvel. It's superheroes. There's action and there's death and there's sadness and victory. And that's what it is. And yes, they have comedic moments in there, but it's not supposed to be comedy. Some of the Marvel movies themselves are, you know, Ant-Man's more funny than, you know, say Thor 2 or whatever. Or Captain America the Winter Soldier is not that funny compared to, I don't know, this one, Love and Thunder. So, you know, and then you get Ninjago, which is, you know, again, an action drama animated show, and they have some levity in there, but again, it's not supposed to be strictly comedy. This, on the other hand, is supposed to be more funny than, say, like I said, you know, Thor 1 or Thor 2, and it actually is funny, you know, don't get me wrong, it's not like, oh, they're, they're it's cringy, but that's a good thing, you know, I mean, a lot of the Marvel movies, like I said, they have some weird moments of like, oh, that, okay, kind of cringy, and like I said, the woke things, that's kind of cringy, but at the same time, the humor was not cringy. Not every joke had me going, oh, you know what I mean, but some of them were pretty funny, um, you know, I do think that it's got a lot of type of humor, a lot of different elements of humor. You know, humor is, of course, subjective. Um, you know, I might find a fart joke funny, while well, you might find that cringy, or, you know, vice versa. So, it is very subjective, but I do think it is pretty funny. Uh, visually, the movie's effing stunning. It looks really, really nice. There are a lot of CGI... There, this is 99.99.99.99% an animated movie, alright? That's just what it is. Uh, Marvel movies have, again, another tendency of relying too heavily on CGI, and sometimes, like, Black Panther, or... I would say every Marvel movie, uh, probably since, like, Avengers 2 or whatever, has had a moment or two of, wow, that's really poop CGI. Except for, like, Infinity War and Endgame. This doesn't have any bad CGI, but it has so much CGI, you know, locations and creatures and, 
you know, vehicles and the goats, you know, the goat boat and they have all these crazy things. It's all CGI and it looks, you know, passable. It looks fine. But when there's so much of it and then they cut away to like a normal room or like a normal house, it, it, it is visually jarring because CGI, CGI can look epic perfect. You know what I mean? It can look flawless. It can be the best CGI you've ever seen in your entire life. But then if you compare the best CGI of your entire life to a normal house, like where I'm filming now, it looks different, even though it's really good. You know, I mean, humans, we have a way of noticing things like that. Oh, this is, that's fake, even though it looks really good. You know, oh, that's, that's real. You know, we have a chance that we have, we know that. And uh, this film doesn't have any bad CGI, but it has so much of it. You're looking at it for so long, and like I said, you're, you know, you're, bam, you know, room, or bam, house, or whatever. You know, I'm not going to get into spoilers, but... There are elements of this movie where there's, you know, real sets and all that. Of course, every movie has real sets. Some of them, you know, they're real mixed with CGI, but I'm talking straight up, you know, where Zeus is in the trailer, that's all CGI for the most part, at least I can tell. And it's good, you know, it looks real. Um, but at the same time, you can tell it isn't. And then, you know, you get to a real location and it's a bit jarring, especially because, you know, Thor, it's a Thor movie. There's a lot of Norse mythology, you know, a lot of crazy stuff going on on screen. And a lot of this, you know, shite isn't. Real, you know, I mean, you have to use CGI to, to you know, mask that, that up. And uh, that's all I have to say on that. It's not bad, but there's so much of it that it can be a little bit, whoa, when you're, you know, on like a real location, you know what I mean? So it, it really much is just a bunch of normal humans in uh, green screen land. That's what it is, you know. And that's 99% of Marvel films today. That's 99% of DC. A lot of movies have a butt ton of CGI, but this is essentially an animated film with a few heads bopping around. Um, it's not bad. I just had to mention it. You know, CGI is good. It's just a lot of it. Um, writing, of course, Taika Waititi directed and wrote the film. A very funny movie. Like I said, the writing is very good. Without getting into too many spoilers, again, try to see this movie as fast as you can because if you don't want to get spoiled, the internet is just a bunch of bullet jackasses and someone's going to spoil it. It's bound to happen, all right? You're looking up how to do your laundry. Thor Love and Thunder spoilers, all right? You're looking up Red Lobster menu, Thor Love and Thunder spoilers, they're on the menu. It's in, it's in the dessert section. You know, it's just, it's, it's everywhere. So be careful when you're browsing the internet. But still, uh, the way it is written, there's a lot of, I guess, uh, you know, it, it is supposed to be funny, and it is funny. There's a lot of action. There's a little, you know, it's not the best plot in the world, but it's a pretty good plot. Uh, and then, of course, Jane, you know, the mighty Thor comes into play, you know, into play, Jane Foster. Um, and they do, without getting into spoilers, they do... Her character, Justice, in my opinion, they did it really well done. Natalie Portman's a great actor. I know everyone's like, oh, Natalie Portman's such a shit actor. Why? Oh, because she, she was bad in the prequels. Look, no one besides maybe Ewan McGregor and like one or two scenes with Anakin and Padme, no one was really that great in the prequels. It's just crap writing. You know, I love the prequels. They're great. Episode 1, 2, 3, I love them. All, all Star Wars is good, right? I'm not saying they're bad movies, but they're not the best in terms of their writing. And this film has good writing. And after, therefore, Natalie Portman looks like a decent actor. And she is, you know, when she when she doesn't have a god-awful script. So it makes sense to, you know, have that in there. But uh, there are moments where Jane, I was like, wow, they're doing that. It's really cool, you know. So there, there's some uh, sad moments. Uh, I didn't cry, but I was tearing up a bit. You know, I mean, I didn't expect that from, you know, because the trailers for this movie make it seem like, oh, it's, it's crazy rock bands, and it's funny, and it's silly, poopy slapstick, you know. And that's in there, and it works. But there's also a kind of a hidden element of, you know, emotion where you're like, wow, I didn't see that coming. That's freaking cool. You know, uh, Gore the God Butch, of course, Christian Bale, who most of us know is Batman in the Dark Knight trilogy, right? Batman Begins, Dark Knight, Dark Knight Rises. He's really freaking good in this. A lot of Marvel villains have the reputation for a lot of people of being kind of just eh or not that good. Um, you know, I do honestly believe DC has better villains. But at the same time, Marvel does have good villains as well. And, you know, Loki's a great villain. Malekith was okay. Uh, Surtur, I guess, whatever. Hella, she was alright. Uh, I think Gore is, this this version of Gore, at least, you know, Loki's my favorite villain in Marvel to date, but if we're just comparing Loki in Thor 1 compared to Thor 2, 3, 4, that rhymed, uh, that is definitely, um, you know, Gore the God Butcher is definitely the best in all four Thor movies. He's really intimidating, really freaky, really cool, uh, you know, kind of a... A neat backstory, you know, a lot of people are going, oh, I didn't like that, but, you know, it, it was it was cool. I think they did a good job. Um, there is a reason, and again, you'll see it. I don't want to spoil it, but I think Gore is done justice in this film. Good acting by Christian Bale. It's probably not that hard to just get bald and just act creepy. <laughs> you know, I mean, that's just what he did. But it worked, you know, what are you going to do? Uh, I, like I said, without getting into too many spoilers, it's kind of hard to do this review, but uh, it works. Again, there's two woke moments in it for those who you want, because I'm going to get the comments. It's in there. Um, in terms of actual negatives, 
the biggest, besides the CGI, which again is a bit jarring, I would say that it, it, it doesn't really know what tone it wants to be. And that's the problem I heard, I heard a lot about before I actually saw it. And, you know, I don't trust anyone but myself. I read it, and I was like, well, whatever, I'm probably going to disagree. And I kind of agreed, actually. Um, you know, Thor, and I'll get this, you know, to this in my uh, Thor video coming up in a day or two, but, you know, Thor 1 and 2 are, you know, there's a few funny moments, but they're more serious films. Thor Ragnarok is essentially Thor in the Three Stooges, and this is that on crack. You know, Thor is very funny. There's a lot of funny moments. And again, it is actually funny. It's not like they're trying to be funny. It doesn't work. It, it is funny to me. But, you know, you pair that with, you know, Thor acting goofy for 10 minutes and a crazy badass action scene. You know, he's using Stormbreaker and just throwing the hammer and calling lightning and all that. And then it goes to a really somber, sad scene for, like, maybe not even a minute. Or maybe a minute and a half at max. And then it goes right back to Thor and the Guardians, or right back to Thor and Korg, or Thor and, you know, whoever. And it's funny, jokey, and then it goes back to a serious scene. And that's the problem, is that I understand movies don't have to have one tone. You know what I mean? It, like, you know, some movies do. You know, Joker, most of it is just kind of serious. The Batman, most of it is just kind of serious, right? There's not a whole lot of humor and all that in there. But, you know, not every movie has to follow the same formula. But if you're going to do multiple emotions and multiple genres of filmmaking like humor, action, and a little bit of emotion sadness in there, make sure it juggles together. And this film didn't do that. It is too funny, and then they go to do a serious scene, and while it is serious and meant to be taken seriously, it doesn't stay long enough for it to sink in. Because you're like, oh damn, this is really sad. And then oh, of course, like, oh I mean they're gonna fun now. It's like, okay. But what the F just happened? You know what I mean? Like, you were, you, you had me. And then it's just back to Thor making funny faces and, you know, whatever. And it is funny, like I said. I'm not trying to say the humor didn't land, because it did. But they, 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 they were trying to do different things. And visually, like I said, visually, this is the best Thor movie, period. This movie looks freaking awesome, right? The shots are awesome. CGI, pretty good. Again, there's a lot of it, but it's good. Uh, you know, writing is good. Action scenes are good. Acting is good. Writing is good. It's just that, that tone thing they really try to struggle. And again, I can't really talk about it. Let me just say, if you read the Thor, Mighty Thor, right, Jane Thor comics, you kind of know what to expect. They, they essentially follow the comic to a T. So if you don't know the comics, I'm not telling you. If you do, you kind of know what you're up against. Again, we all kind of suspected that anyway. But at the same time, uh, it, it, like I said, that's my biggest issue, is that it, they, they really try to go for funny, 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 and then they go for serious, but it's, it's there for so little time you're, you're kind of left, you're trying to digest it, right? And then it's just back to crazy, you know, rock bands and, you know, funny music and chords being funny and Valkyries being funny. You know, everyone's trying to be funny. And they are funny, but let's let the, the more, you know, Marvel, I think, is trying to, besides the whole woke thing, Marvel is leaning a bit towards uh, jokey, jokey, jokey. Which, you know, I get it. It's funny. If you're going to make a funny movie, and it is funny, that's not my complaint. It's just... Like I said, Marvel, to its core, is like Ninjago. It is an action drama franchise, right? With a little bit of comedy stretch in there. And I get it, you know, Ant-Man, this movie, Thor Ragnarok, they're more, tr they're trying to be more comedic than, say, you know, uh, Endgame, or Iron Man 2, or Iron Man 1, or, you know, Thor 1, Captain America 1. It, I get it. But it seems like every movie now they're trying to go for... Funny, and I think the word there. I think Marvel is mixing the word funny with fun. The Batman, right? Very serious, dark movie, but I have fun watching it. Right? You don't need to be entertained and laughing your guts out to have fun at a movie. I had fun watching Joker, and that's a depressing as hell film. But I didn't have fun because I like being depressed. I had fun because it was a good movie, and that's I think what they're trying to kind of you know display. And if they keep going funny, funny, funny. I don't know. You know what I mean? Look, the MCU is not going to stop anytime soon. Without getting into spoilers, this movie ends on, on a, you know, Thor will return moment, of course, right? So, with that being said, the MCU is going to keep thriving, hopefully, and keep going for a long, long time. And if they continue to make quality content, I'm there for it. But if they're just going to abandon all the drama and the, you know, more serious storylines um, to, you know, more Thor, you know, antics, I don't know. That's probably what wobbly. That's probably why I love Moon Knight so much, right? That show is freaking awesome. There's funny moments in it, but it's mainly action drama. That's what Marvel is. That's what they were in, conceived as in the MCU with Iron Man One, you know. And I get it. Don't I said it before? Some things are trying to be funny. Some things aren't. I understand that. But 
That's what I liked about Moon Knight so much. Is that you know I like Thor. I like this is a good movie. This is a great movie. I'll buy it on Blu-ray. But totally, it's completely out of wood. It's out of whack. Um, but that's what's cool. You know what I mean? Like you could watch Iron Man One, completely different tone to Shang Chi or the Eternals or Thor Four or Civil War or Endgame or Guardians Two, whatever. You know what I mean? There's so much of it, and we're gonna get so much more of it that it's fine. You know what I mean? So. Honestly, if I was to give Thor uh, Love and Thunder review, I'd probably give it an A-. minus. I really enjoyed it. Again, it's funny. It's action-packed. Got a good plot, good writing, good acting. The woke stuff, it's in there, but I'm not counting that, of course, because that's not how you're supposed to review a film. Uh, but at the same time, again, man, that tone, it's not horrible. You know what I mean? It didn't break the movie, but if I really, you know, if I, if I didn't have a YouTube channel, I wouldn't really mind it too much. I mean, oh, yeah, it's fine. But because I have to come up with a you know, negative, because, you know, not everything is perfect in life... Uh, this is not a perfect film. I had a problem with the tone. Again, they were trying to juggle a few things, and it didn't really work for me. But ultimately, the movie does work. Ultimately, I almost cried, which I didn't even freaking expect in a Thor movie. I laughed. It was a great, fun, epic adventure with a great action scenes throughout. And, uh, you know, I really enjoyed it for the most part. Again, uh, that tone, though, that's what really, really put it down to an A-. minus. Uh, it, it did feel out of shape. Or uh, just out of whack, I guess. Uh, the, the CGI, again, it's not bad CGI, it's just there's a lot of it. I also noticed, quick side note, I also noticed a lot of blood in this film, right? Yellow blood, red blood. Not really coming from people, but more like, you know, Norse crazy monsters that you see in, like, the Lego sets, you know what I mean? Just crazy, weird-looking animals. And, of course, sorry about that, guys. The quick edit, it gets quick cut, doesn't really matter to you. But, of course, 20 seconds or so from ending the video, my friggin' camera dies. It doesn't fail every time. In fact, it does fail every time. I'm kind of sick of it. Anyway, that's about it. Just all I wanted to say about Thor, Love, and Thunder. Again, I really enjoyed it. I'm uh, going to give it an A-. minus. Again, the tone is a bit e uh, uneven sometimes, but uh, I did enjoy it. I can't wait to get it on Blu-ray. And hey, try to get to the theater as soon as you can to watch it, because it's very much a movie that you need to see in theaters. Uh, you know, if you want to wait for Disney+, Plus, I guess that's fine, but, you know, just to avoid spoilers and all that, if you really care about the MCU, I definitely would recommend going ASAP to see Thor, Love, and Thunder. Again, good story overall, good, good, uh, good comedy, good action, good everything for the most part. Uh, some minor things here and there which I already touched upon, but I think it's a fun ride and a fun film. Thank you guys, and we'll see you in the next video.